Hey guys, so over the last few weeks I have been experimenting with cooling the back of my 1390 graphics card using heat sinks and thermal pads and this 240mm 1000 constant RPM RGB fan. But what I'd like to do today is share with you some results that I've had over the last few days because I've been experimenting with it a little bit more and I've replaced the thermal pads, I've added a few additional small heat sinks and I'd like to share the results with you with using two Noctua fans instead of this one fixed 240mm fan which is effectively two 120mm fans. So I did a video about this before and I explained exactly all the measures that I took and I explained the problem as well but in short the problem is that with the NVIDIA RTX 3080s and 3090s, when the VRAM is up high, it overheats. So this is a problem that affects the 1390 really badly, in particular because there's so many additional VRAM chips at the back of the graphics card, and those VRAM chips really aren't being cooled enough. So when the VRAM is being pushed, well, it overheats, it throttles, and then your performance goes down like 10 or 20%. I mean, the backplate is so hot, it's ridiculous. I mean, you could boil an egg on it. So it was a really good discussion surrounding my last video. Many thanks to everyone who left a comment on this. And you know, there's some of you guys have been doing all these different cooling techniques and water cooling and replacing thermal pads within the GPU, etc. It's really interesting seeing what all you guys are doing. I've replied to all comments in that video, but I just want to point out that in that video, I did talk about, you know, I used the, this fan in many different situations, but someone did ask, why are you using this? In an airflow situation why you're using push rather than pull and referring to the fact that i had it with the air going down airflow into the gpu rather than an exhaust you know i can use this to push air to the graphics card or i can use it to withdraw air from the graphics card and i did talk about that in that video i did talk about using this in different situations but i did use this as a push and a pull and i did it today in these experiments as well and Maybe your results are different, but I have not seen any difference between setting these fans as being a cooler or being as an exhaust. Push and pull doesn't seem to make a big difference. Maybe it will be different for you guys with your PC setup or with your fans, but with this fan and even with these fans, when I cranked them up to 2000 RPM, I didn't see any difference between using push and pull. Now, I did talk about that briefly in the last video, but I did want to clarify that. So... Another thing, another comment that I received in that video kind of inspired me to replace the thermal pads. Someone had pointed out that the heat sinks I was using only had thermal heat pads on about 50% of the heat sink. Now that was not by design. That is because I bought a packet of thermal heat pads and I used the ones that I had. You know, I didn't buy enough. So I just kind of spaced them out a little bit. And their comment was that I'm only using like 50%, so only 50% of the heat is being anticipated. So I bought additional thermal pads and I covered them all. Now the difference here is that I didn't just cover all of the heat sinks, I also improved the thermal pads. Previously the thermal pads were, they're about 0.5 millimeters thick, but these new ones are about 1.5 millimeters thick. They're a lot thicker. They should, in theory, give me better performance. And did they, maybe, Maybe. Now, when I've been doing these temperature recordings, I've been using OBS as well, which does kind of drop uh, the temperatures slightly when I'm doing recording at the same time. I didn't hook up my PC when I was doing these tests. I should have. But I noticed that when I replaced those thin heat pads with the thicker ones and I covered all of the heat sink, I probably saw a one degree drop at most. I really didn't see a big difference. And that surprised me as well. I... I assumed that the commenter was right, that I should cover all of the heat sink to dissipate more heat. And I used thicker heat pads again, which I thought would help. And I did see a difference, you know, it is obviously making a little bit of a difference, but when things level out, I'm seeing about a one, two degrees at most, but you know yourself, you know, temperatures go up and down. So I only saw about a one degree change when I applied these additional thicker thermal heat pads and I covered all the heat sinks with them. So. Still okay. I'm not disappointed with that result. I do think it's maybe helping a slight bit. But the other thing that I did was I went out and I picked up some additional heat sinks. But the ones I had previously were really big and really bulky and it was quite hard to cover the whole graphics card with it. So I picked up four additional little heat sinks. They're a lot smaller 
and the actual thermal heat pads on these things are small as well. They're quite thin, so I should maybe replace those at one point as well. But I did apply them and I put them in lots of different situations and I didn't really notice any difference, if I'm honest there. I didn't notice any difference. Now, I'm, I'm still going to be using these additional heat sinks. I don't think they're doing nothing per se, but I think the reason they're not doing anything is because the majority of those VRAM chips at the back of the graphics card, they're all in the middle of the graphics card, so that's where all the additional heat is being generated, right in the middle of that back plate, and then will obviously be dissipated across the plate. But I already had two really big heat sinks on those VRAM chips. I guess it makes sense because I'm, I'm not covering any additional area in the center of the, the back plate of the graphics card. So the other thing that I wanted to do was test the Noctua NF E12 by 25 PWM fans. Now, these are widely regarded as the best fans on the market and the company recently sent five of them. So I wanted to try two of these because as I said in my last video, I wasn't really impressed by this fan. It's not really designed for, you know, cooling the back plate of a graphics card. Well, that's a lie. It's sold as being uh, able to cool the back of a graphics card, but it runs at a constant 1000 RPM and I knew I could get a better result than that. So I applied two of these brown and beige Noctua fans to the back of the graphics card. And this was done when I had those additional thermal heat pads and the heat sinks on there as well. And even when these were running at like 700, 800 RPM, which is 200 less than this fan or this combination of fans, I saw a drop of about one degree or so. So even when this was running at a slower speed than these fans, I did see a drop of one degrees. As I scaled it up and I pushed this all the way to 2000 RPM, which is obviously louder, but these fans aren't loud. In fact, at 2000 RPM, it's about the same noise as, or even less actually than the, the fans of the graphics card running at 100%. But when I cranked these to 2000, uh, when I cranked them to 2000 RPM, I did see a major difference. And again, I did this in push and I did it in pull. I set an exhaust and an airflow. And I probably saw a drop of a minimum of four degrees when that's running at 2000 RPM. That is significant. So I saw a, a minimum reduction in, in temperatures above everything else that I've done by four degrees. But sometimes it was five or six. It was going up and down, but minimum four. This, this did make a difference. This did make a difference. Now, it's not a fair comparison because this was running at a fixed 1000 RPM. These are better fans and more expensive fans. I mean, one of these is more expensive than, you know, this whole combination set of thing. So running this at 2000 RPM is maybe a little bit of a cheat, but it does show you that when you, you know, run the fans at a much higher speed, much more, um, much more airflow will be generated either going up the way or down the way. However you do it, push or pull, running these at 2000 RPM did drop the temperatures. So I'm not saying this is going to be a fix for everyone, you know, putting these fans on and running them at speeds that maybe they'll be audible. But it's a good solution, especially if you're doing like video rendering or, you know, any miners out there. If you're running Noctua uh, fans on the back, I honestly think that compared to basic fans, you'll see a four degrees difference. Most of you should see that. But it will depend on your setup. I'm running a, a, an open PC case here. If you've got an, a good airflow case, you you probably wouldn't see that kind of uh, significant difference. But for me, I was really, really impressed. I've, I've got like four or five degrees at least off of my temperatures. Now, in the video recordings that I did, you know, it dropped it way down because OBS was dropping uh, the temperatures a little bit more because I wasn't using as much VRAM. But when I've got my VRAM pushed at 100% and I'm putting everything at high, you know, overclocked the memory, etc. Previously, before I did any of these fixes, I was running at about 110 degrees or even above that and I was throttling. In my last video, I dropped down from 110 down to like 106, 108. It's now sitting about 102, that kind of uh, 102, 104, that kind of area. So I have dropped it by another, you know, four degrees or so. And yeah, quite pleased with the results. So like I said, there was a lot of good comments from you guys. Uh, and one um, commenter in particular, Graham, reached out to me and he shared with me the fact that he, um, if I can get it here, he was following guides on uh, overclock.net. I've got the address right, overclock.net. 
And he followed this guide to apply thermal pads to the graphics card, actually in the graphics card, and he's seen some significant drop in temperatures. And looking at the comments, most of you are seeing drop in temperatures when you do that by about 20 or 30 degrees. So what I've been doing so far with the heat sinks, with you know using these fans to exhaust more air, etc., this is pretty much as far as I can go right now before I put it into my PC case with airflow with like 10 of these running. But beyond that, once you kind of hit that bottleneck and there's, you know, you can't see any more improvement with blasting air at the back plate, what you're going to have to do is what Graham and many others did, is that you're going to have to open up your graphics card and you're going to have to replace the thermal pads that are actually inside the, the graphics card. Effectively, you want to change the, the thermal pads that are on top of the VRAM chips. Now, I will say, it's mind-boggling to me that NVIDIA, and I'm sure AMD are guilty of this as well, that they can sell a graphics card at like 1,500, 2,000 bucks, and they've cheaped out on thermal pads. It's kind of bizarre to me that simply, you know, spending 10 pounds or so, or $10 on thermal pads and replacing these thermal pads yourself can drop it by 30 degrees. Kind of cheap, kind of lazy on their part that they've cheaped out and, well, I don't know, it's mind-boggling. Why haven't they put these thermal pads on there themselves? Why have they cheaped out and given the thermal pads that are not doing their job? Especially when they know that this has got an overheating problem. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised by all this, but what I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks, what I'm going to be doing is I'll be putting this into the new PC case and then I'll be monitoring temperatures more. But beyond that, I don't think there's much else I can do beyond the heat sinks, etc. So I'm probably going to do what others have done, open up the graphics card, and then try and replace those thermal pads myself. I think if you're looking for the most significant drop in temperatures for your 3080 or 1390, that's really what you're going to have to do. And it's not something that I wanted to do. I don't really like messing about with graphics cards and opening them up, you know? There's always something that can go wrong. But I do think this is something that most of us probably should do. It's probably something we do have to do if we're using this graphics card for the next few years and we do want the most of it from a gaming, from a rendering point of view, from a mining point of view, however you're using your graphics card, it really is up to you, but if you want the most from it, I think replacing the internal thermal pads that are on the VRAM chips itself, that will give you the best performance and the best drop in temperatures. So thanks for watching guys, and once again, I do appreciate all the comments, all the feedback. I've, I've learned a lot from everyone who's left a comment uh, on these videos. I really have. So. Keep the comments coming guys, keep the suggestions coming and I'll try and experiment a little bit more in the future. But like I said, the next thing I'll be doing is dismantling that PC and putting it into a better case, a closed case that actually has some airflow. So thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.